second webinar in a series of remote work webinars provided by NetGuru. And today uh, we have an expert in remote communication joining us, Zuzia Wheeler. Uh, can you say a few words about yourself? Of course. Uh, so uh, I'm a project manager at NetGuru for over two years now and remote communication is my everyday work and I'm happy to provide you with some examples how we do it at NetGuru. Great, thank you. And my name is Krzysztof Szebelski. If you want to address me directly in chat or QA, you can call me Chris. It's uh, perfectly fine. I've been working remotely in different companies for the last 10 years. So I've been preparing for the time of the quarantine quite quite a long time. And for the last two years, I'm even homeschooling my children. So I have all them all the time at home. So nothing really changed except that the toilet paper is um, much harder to get these days. So uh, this is about us and we are the part of NetGuru, a company who, which was uh, remote first for last 12 years and we grew uh, quite quickly, especially in the last three years. So we have tested some practice, practices and methods that really work and scale up and we want to share them with you, with, with everybody who are uh, now going through those changes and maybe maybe you can use them in some way in your context, in your company, to make it easier for your organization. And today, the topic of our discussion is uh, communication. So we will show you on examples, how do we communicate at NetGuru? And during our presentation, please use Q&A panel to submit any questions that you have or comments to what we are presenting. Well, as we finish our presentation part, we will answer those questions as many as we can. So let us know what is bugging you and what raises your eyebrow when you hear us describing how we work uh, at NetGuru. And at the end, we'll wrap it up and show you some links to other materials you can use. And if you need to go and cannot stay for the Q&A part, the recording will be available. We'll send you a link. It will be on YouTube. So I hope we will stay, stay till the end because it will be an in interesting webinar. But if you need to go or take care of your kids, don't worry, it will be online. Okay, so let's get to it. And uh, communication is always hard, even in person, but the remote com com communication can actually improve the way you work as a team or, uh, or affect your uh, productivity uh, and uh, in interactions in a negative way. Uh, there are several common concerns that companies have at the moment or usually have when it comes to remote co communication. And you cannot actually conversation with your core and uh, keep keep the human connection in your team this is basically what we are uh, facing right now with uh, with full isolation but also uh, remote communication is crucial uh, to ensure that we pass uh, information effectively that we can uh, cooperate with each other uh, in, a, in an efficient way uh, but we are very interested in what are your specific concerns and we will be happy to, to, uh, to so you can share them with us and we will talk about them uh, in the second part of our webinar. Uh, basically, uh, you have to ask yourself, is communication in your team really working? Because when you have some issues with face-to-face -face communication, communication in person, uh, for example, uh, let's think if you have ever attended a meeting that should have been an email, uh, then I think you uh, you can have similar, uh, similar obstacles when it comes to remote co communication, which is basically a shift in the mindset. And that uh, we have to just uh, use a different uh, medium to communicate, but uh, the efficiency of, of spending time uh, stays the same. And, and we still can have pointless meetings uh, and uh, our, uh, we are here to uh, let you know what you can do to prepare yourself to prevent the poor performance in your teams. There are a lot of tools that you can use for communication or team management or, or need, uh, but what actually matters is that the tool doesn't matter. 
the, what matters is the communication skills. So no tool will magically equip your employees, your coworkers with communication skills. They are just a mean. So if you don't have standards when it comes to communication, you don't have a set schedule don't have ahead of time, then I'm sorry to tell you this, but you'll struggle. But we are here to help you with that uh, the best way we can. First things first, basic equipment. So headphones are a must and doesn't have to be uh, anything fancy. I have some regular headphones that are attached to any mobile device that you buy and they work just fine. Uh, but if you struggle with, uh, with a lot of background noise, there are some apps that help with noise reduction like Crisp. If you have children running around or you are not the, the, the only person in a the room, then uh, that would be a good solution to test it out and, uh, and see if this will improve your, uh, the way you, you, uh, you, the way you uh, participate in calls and the way you, you can be heard. Uh, another good thing in, case, in terms of equipment is a second monitor. You can even use your TV for that. Uh, and this would improve your work greatly. For example, on our call here, we can share a presentation on one screen and uh, follow uh, the chat on the other screen. So uh, this, is, uh, this is great, this is a great investment. And I think that, that uh, for people who work major, majorly from home, uh, this is a must. Uh, also, uh, you got to take care of the, of the background that you have right now. Nobody wants to see your, your bed, <laughs> uh, but uh, having, uh, placing yourself in a, a convenient way in your apartment is crucial, but there are also some tricks that, uh, that you can use. For example, Zoom recently introduced uh, really creative backgrounds. So it seems like you're on top of a building, but, but you are in a room full of kids, for example, that you can easily participate in a call without distracting anybody there. And also there is uh, simple solutions like blurring the background uh, that are also uh, great. Basically, basically uh, having a wall behind you, that would be the best thing. Uh, so I, I said something about setting expectations and uh, this is actually something that, that NetGuru uh, did quite long time ago. Uh, we set expectations towards mobile work, uh, but uh, for many of you, now comes the change. So now you have the moment to uh, introduce uh, some, some uh, necessity, necessary uh, rules that will make your coworkers uh, collaborate in a, in a convenient uh, manner uh, so they can take care of, the, of their uh, comfort in terms of, of, of job, job responsibilities, but also personal comfort. Uh, uh, you have to do that in order to avoid uh, chaos. And uh, these rules are fairly simple. Uh, in NetGuru, like I said, we have them like way ahead of time, uh, way, way ahead of, of uh, uh, let's say time, because uh, I mean, uh, like we even introduce our culture book to people who are not even onboarded uh, to NetGuru. So we, uh, convey the, we try to convey the message how we work way ahead of uh, time. So uh, basically, uh, this is something that you can do as a company, but remember that you are working in teams, pro probably smaller teams, and it's also great to uh, set those rules, like a working agreement um, with, with, when you start working uh, with somebody. Uh, for example, here you can see an example that somebody wor likes to work at night rather than during the day. So this would, having this message put out to, to, the, to the team, uh, lets you, uh, allows you to, to avoid miscommunication when you're trying to reach somebody, but they are not there, because they are working late hours. So uh, these are the things that, that uh, I would highly recommend you to introduce right now, if you are now making the change uh, to, to go full remote, how you'd like to work with each other. Uh, what is a good way uh, is to keep the rituals that you have usually in the office. So basically to greeting uh, people uh, on the channels we have here two examples project. Uh, so, so something that you would have like uh, in, your, in your team room or over the water cooler, but you also have a company wide channel that allows you to, um, to communicate freely. 
and uh, this is also a great conversation starter. So uh, you can add a visual, you can share a piece of your, your life. Uh, for example, oh, sorry. Uh, and, and of course, this, this, this uh, uh, conversations include everybody that is involved uh, in, your, in your life, even your CEO or your client, uh, you are a part of, of a bigger team. Uh, so it's good to keep those rituals. Uh, we also keep uh, our communication uh, on office basis. So we still keep our uh, channel for people from the Poznań office uh, that are, uh, of course, those channels are not for, for work. They are just for these breaks that you take from work and they are for team building. So uh, they are a good way to, for, for people to bond because you can delude yourself that people are only working during these eight hours that they spend before the computer, but they're also uh, bonding. They are also sharing their experiences and uh, conversations happen in kitchens. So it's good to uh, ask, still ask questions like, what movies do you recommend? What did you work? What did you watch last night? What did you do uh, that was something in, worth recommending? And also share what's going on with your life uh, share your big pictures of your pets that you uh, probably can bring to the office or share those, those uh, pictures either way in person. Another thing that is super important uh, in terms of setting expectations is to signal availability. And what's a, what's, what's a good way to do that is, for example, Slack allows you to set a status and you can uh, let your team or you can let your team know in a regular written message sorry, taking one hour off, uh, I will be away from keyboard back at this time. Uh, and uh, people will know that you are unreachable at that particular time. You can also set yourself to, to busy to use a do not disturb mode. Uh, and people will know that, that you are in focus mode and they, will, they can send you a reminder if they think that, that the matter is urgent and they, they still want, to, want, want you to get a notification that somebody is trying to reach you. Uh, what is one thing that, that I would be really, uh, uh, that, ca that can be dangerous is to using the busy status all the time because you cannot be busy all the time. So it's like a story about a girl who, who cried wolf. When you uh, are always busy or with a status busy, then it means that something's wrong and uh, maybe that's not entirely true. Uh, and uh, something that is also uh, a great example of how we set expectations in NetGuru is to tracking, uh, tracking a work schedule with a calendar. So here we have an example of something uh, that shows us that maybe you have bad habits. Uh, and uh, just, just for a second here, uh, we can see that that's a good thing you have a shared meal slot uh, for people who would like to join you on a call so you don't have to drink a coffee or eat breakfast alone. You have some uh, away from keyboard time uh, for, your, for your family, for example, for going, to, for, going for a walk. And you have uh, color codes for uh, meetings of, of different importance or different uh, uh, level of, of, of uh, or, or, or for example, meet, meetings that are optional but you also have back-to-back -back meetings. What is a great solution here is that uh, Google Calendar uh, has, a, has a default of 30 and one hour meetings, but you can change it to speedy meetings that will allow you to have those short breaks over the day to do all those things that that uh, human body needs in order to relax between two meetings or to prepare yourself. That's also uh, a great way to catch a breath uh, and uh, <clears throat> It's a, it's a, a great way to organize your work and let your team members know what's going on with you. Uh, but we are here for the remote communication. And I think that uh, writing is, write, written communication is super important and will never fully, uh, fully uh, overtake the, the uh, oral communication. Uh, but it's also something that we can take from now for, for the future when things are much calmer and back to normal uh, because written content is, is fundamental. Uh, you can use it for 
um, for preparing uh, a documentation that will last for for days, for weeks, for months, for years. Uh, you can then get back to it. You can share it easily. Uh, you can uh, access it basically anywhere, uh, anytime, edit it with, with new versions. Um, and this is something that first is a huge investment of time uh, because you have to prepare it if you are not used to it. But then it will be a great benefit uh, for, for, uh, for, for the future. And uh, it's actually a great way to switch uh, the, the work you're doing from, from synchronous to asynchronous. And this is actually something that improves greatly the communication. If you don't have to go over a document with somebody over a call and take uh, one hour of their time, but maybe leave a document, ask for feedback, and, and this person will, uh, will add their notes uh, in a convenient time. This is also something that we will need now that we are for, when we are working from home with kids and there's no good time to, to sit down to a meeting or uh, we cannot set a common time slot. So it might feel awkward at the beginning because if you are not used to it, if you are used to, uh, to, to just talking to somebody face to face, uh, then it will put a lot of pressure on you to uh, maybe that you will feel uh, you're judged, uh, but nobody's getting it perfect. Like, <laughs> like, don't overthink it. You'll get there. You, you will sound professional if you are not uh, preparing an email that's full of, of jargon, uh, corporate jargon. You'll still convey your message if you keep it simple and just write as you speak. And really, uh, honesty uh, is, is, uh, is, is something uh, that, that you can uh, include in your messages to admit to your, your shortcomings uh, and just learn as you go. And it will become better and it will become easier. And this is something that if you are now hit for, uh, it really, let me tell you, it is the best form of communication actually. Oh, sorry, not the best, but it's good when you uh, try to, to set uh, rules. So for example, you have, uh, you got to take care of, uh, uh, of keeping single source of truth. Because if you have many channels of communication, like emails, direct messages, you even have like calls, uh, but uh, you have like a lot of documents that you can edit, keeping one place that you will add all the relevant information is good. Here's an example from comment section in Jira, where you can actually elaborate on, on particular task and actually keep this as a documentation for the future. Uh, we also, uh, for longer content, we ask for feedback, we share a document with our team and Google uh, Docs is doing a great job here. You can just uh, analyze it together and sew it back at this document. I guarantee you it will be twice as good as it was before the editing from your teammates. And it's a good way to, to uh, collaborate on a, on the document. Uh, also, uh, when you are communicating, uh, you might be afraid that this communication is like less efficient because you cannot convey all the face expressions that you'll try to, uh, to do. So we are not, at NetGuru, we are fans of, of emojis and we are actually uh, structuring our messages in a way that, that it attracts attention. Uh, you can also use something that is known from, from emails, even in, a, in messages on Slack. So, so bolding crucial uh, things, uh, still using bullet points. It's, it's the communication or written communication on instant messaging doesn't have to be poor. It, it, has, it can, can be rich. Uh, so uh, you can also use templates. For example, for setting agendas, you can allow your team to, to comment on the agendas, add things that, you, that matter for you, uh, even create a small poll when you are asking for opinions. Uh, and uh, Slack also allows you to use something that's called workflow and you can customize it uh, accordingly to your team needs. So for example, daily statuses can be uh, set every day in the same form so you, can, you know what, you, what to expect 
and uh, it doesn't uh, surprise you. But uh, like like I said, it also can um, it also can be a good way to soften. Uh, the information so we all know netiquette we all know that caps lock is not welcomed we all know the the dot of hate uh, so uh, we are like i said real fan of emojis and slack is actually not prepared for us because we we tend to reach the reaction limit uh, because because uh, here as you can see an example from our head of growth uh, we also use uh, such such messages in the company-wide channel for for wishing uh, happy birthday, celebrating small things, or, or national holidays like uh, Women's Day. And uh, also uh, we use emojis, uh, reactions uh, to the post as uh, a way to vote. For example, uh, it is um, an easier solution than asking everybody to provide a short feedback or provide a comment because it's actually Way, uh, way, way more simple, and uh, and you can all already see not to analyze uh, every message uh, below the the post, but you can clearly see uh, the reactions. And now uh, let's uh, let's hear what Chris has to say. But still, uh, over uh, nevertheless, we are using still speech and talking and this is a very crucial channel of our communication and it still remains silver uh, for for us so i want to tell you something about how we uh, meet and the meetings having this talking time that is synchronous and everybody you know is at the same time at the same place can be a real trouble especially in the remote setting this is one of the levels of health for for programmers you know picking everybody and asking them what have you done today or is it done yet or you know having three hours long meetings is definitely not a way to go. You cannot run the meetings remotely the same way as you did uh, face to face or when you were collocated. So how to approach this subject, how to make meetings engaging. Uh, there are several ways uh, to do that. One of them, oh, there's something going on. Uh, it was linked. <laughs> Can you just press the next slide on the panel? Okay, so how to make them engaging? One of the ways is to not be the only person running the show and to give people opportunity to do things, to comment things, to move things, to create some new content as the presenter speaks. And this is a great way. There are multiple ways of using a virtual whiteboard or any other type of a board when you can shift ideas, describe, comment, and have some interactions that would normally happen when you are collocated. But during because of the remote setting, only one person can have a mic effectively, but it doesn't mean that others can be uh, disengaged from the meeting or somehow um, not actively participating. The other way, maybe uh, when you have a bigger audience, is also leverage some tools that can gather the feedback for you uh, much easier. So uh, can you move to the next? For instance, there are some tools like Mentimeter that can get responses from multiple people and display them in a nice graph real time. So if you are reaching tens of hundreds of people on your remote meeting, this is a great way to keep them engaged and to uh, make them invested in the meeting because if their opinion is heard, even though you cannot pass the mic to 80 people on the call, their voice is heard and they feel more invested in the meeting. And if you are not accustomed to some fancy tools and IT uh, solutions, there is one simple rule like if you are doing a meeting with other people, just let them write in the document, whether it's Google Docs, Dropbox paper, whatever, just comment on the agenda items, show what they think, show uh, maybe some additional context. So it's not disturbing the speaker, because he can continue his or her flow, but she can or he can she see what are the reactions and comments and what people have in mind, how to direct the, uh, the, the subject in the way that addresses the concerns or issues that they are raising. So this is very effective. There are multiple tools that uh, enable you to collaborate on notes and using any of them is a great move forward. So you create from the agenda, you create the meeting minutes and they are ready as uh, the 
meeting is over. You don't need to edit, add things, and then share them, and then get feedback, and then improve on them, or kind of incorporate this feedback. This whole phase is over. The next thing uh, is, I think the biggest thing, and one of the concerns already somehow touched this, the biggest issue in remote communication is that when there is a conflict between people, you cannot really see it. You need to be an extra sensitive to some cues to understand what's going on between the people. When you are in the office, it's very easy. You can see how they look at each other or how they do not speak to each other. And you see that there is some beef between people or there, there's something wrong and you can, you can touch on it and see whether you can be a facilitator or help them somehow. In a remote setting, it's very easy to get, um, to push back and hide and do not participate in a team's discussion. It's very easy to disappear. So when there is a difficult situation between people, you, you have had really trouble to, to sense it. So what are the ways that we use to somehow gauge and, and understand what's going on in the team? One of them is uh, the health status meeting or a kind of pulse check meeting I described a week ago in a previous webinar when we have the whole team together and discuss what are the uh, outcomes of our work and then we work more effectively? Can we work in a way that make us more comfortable in cooperation in this remote setting? This is very important. Some teams can have retrospectives. This is also a great opportunity to understand what is the dynamic between the uh, team members. The other solution can be uh, having automated tools that will sense if there is an issue uh, within the team members. There are bots on a Slack which send very easy, quick question you answer by pressing uh, emoji reaction. So it can give you some kind of overview of how people feel or how they cooperate or where are the issues. And then you have a material to talk about it when you meet. Um, but of course, not everyone uh, can use them, uh, but they are also free alternatives. Susie, if you can press another slide. For instance, Team Morale is a web-based app. You can go there, answer some uh, questions. It takes less than five minutes and gives you a number, like what is going on in the team. And it's, it can be a really good way to start the conversation uh, during the Health Pulse meeting. So this is a way that you can understand, but none of them is as effective as having one-on-one -on -one meetings with every team member every week. And I will stress this, every team member every week. Like this is the most basic thing a manager can do to understand what's going on in people's mind and in between people and act on it. Uh, we will talk about it a bit more in detail in two weeks when we have a webinar about manager role in remote setting and how to run those one-on-ones and why they are so important. But especially now when we have such a situation with huge uncertainty, with uh, big stress levels among the people because of many reasons, having this human connection is very, very important. And as Susie started, it's not as much about the tools but maintaining this human connection between people, it's still the, the most crucial thing. And as we work in this situation, as we have right now, we cannot expect that everybody will act professionally and tie up their kids so that they are you know, presented in very nice way and nobody disturbs the meeting. Uh, we have to be more understanding and more sensitive and uh, have faith in people because it will affect each and every of us, our clients, our partners. So I guess we need to get used to those situation and just um, not punish those mistakes, but learn from them and be really understanding if something, something goes wrong. Uh, because we are all new to this situation when everybody is working from home. So this is probably the one last thing I wanted to highlight here among the all of the previous things that we discussed. So now we will go through Q&A. If you have some reflections, thoughts about what we presented or something is still not very clear, please ask your question in Q&A and we'll answer, answer as many of those questions as we can in the next 20, 25 minutes. So Susie, can you take the first one? You need to unmute yourself. 
exactly. Common mistake on calls. <laughs> Okay, so looking at the Q&A, uh, we have a first question from Kaya Przystupał Rządca. Uh, how, how do we avoid the misinterpretation within a team? And uh, this question was asked at the beginning, so I hope that we answered uh, during our uh, presentation that first of all, we assume good intentions, that nobody is malicious uh, in their messages, that uh, we really uh, make an extra effort to the uh, understanding. Uh, that uh, that we all uh, face some challenges right now when we are working fully remotely. Uh, but in terms of when, when it comes to, to the written communication per se, uh, we, uh, we try to use emojis. We, uh, what I do frequently is to re-read uh, something that I've written down and, and to try to understand it from a perspective of somebody who, who uh, doesn't know what, what this message is about uh, to maybe soften some, some phrasings and to, uh, to be as polite as I can be uh, in that situation to adjust. Uh, and I think uh, being understanding goes a long way here. Yeah, and, and overall, it's better to over communicate and to provide more content and more context to what you're saying. And maybe at some point people will say to you, Kaya, it's, it's enough, we get it. But it's better, especially at the beginning, to write a bit more. And some teams I know use kind of safe emoji, as you have, you know, safe word that you add at the end of the message to show that you have no bad intentions. Like this is not sarcasm. I'm not trying to put blame on anybody. This is like the message I, I want to open up in a conversation. I don't want to harm anyone. So this is a, a way to post a sensitive uh, information messages that can get misinterpreted mis inter in a way that somehow protects from having uh, bad feelings about it. And the next question from Kaya is uh, directed to me. How do you manage to work with kids at home? And there are several tips I can give you. One is to have really uh, scheduled blocks of time uh, in your calendar when you can have some attention directed towards your kids. As we've shown before, there was this away from keyboard time, so I won't be available during that hour, but this is the time when I eat lunch with my family and then spend some time with kids. And if they know that at the specific time, daddy or mommy will be available and you know will be willing to sh look at their marvelous creations of the day or answer their questions, they get used to this rhythm and then, uh, then they do not disturb because they know there will be a time when their needs will be addressed. Also those small breaks, as we saw, sh shown you before, uh, 10, five minutes, and sometimes they're checking up what's going on, maybe helping them is also a good way. Um, also, I, pl I try to plan some activities for them a day before. So there is no, um, place for them getting completely bored and having no idea how to spend the rest of the day. So for instance, uh, recently with my wife, we organized a scavenger hunt during the night. We leave some post-it notes in different places with some tasks for kids. And then when they wake up, go to the toilet, they see the first post-it with the direction to the another post-it. And this gives us half an hour maybe every day to sleep longer and to get get some rest uh, and they have a you know nice way to start the day and also check their knowledge as they are homeschooled this is our way to do the test so they are attractive and they take some time for kids and they don't feel like it's somehow forced on them or, or it's a boring mundane thing so those kind of things i think uh, help a lot when uh, you need to deal with kids uh, at home the next uh, question is from uh, Fabian. Uh, do you have some tips how to communicate during a sprint planning meeting, uh, some nice tools and or rules? Uh, so uh, sp I think sprint planning meeting has uh, a fair uh, share of, of uh, common things with other meetings. So basically to let everybody speak, uh, to uh, be very aware of maybe somebody who is uh, withdrawn, uh, who is not sharing their thoughts. Uh, because it's crucial to get everybody's opinion uh, during during sprint planning. Uh, when it comes to uh, estimation, for example, because there are teams that are estimating during the sprint planning, uh, there are some tips uh, because 
when we discuss the uh, the estimations openly, uh, people might get affected by each other uh, and suggest uh, get get some suggestions from from other people. So what we are doing is to show the the estimation number on the call at the same time. Something that we will do in person when we are sitting in one room. But also there is like a tool, for example, uh, time o'clock uh, in addition to Slack uh, that you can actually suggest your estimation. And at, at, at one time, uh, a person running the meeting will show everybody's, uh, everybody's estimations. So, so uh, you cannot suggest uh, anything and you cannot uh, impose your opinion. Uh, so, uh, I think that's uh, that's the, these are the most things. I'm I'm sorry, uh, Fabian, because I don't know what you are struggling with, uh, particularly uh, during the planning meeting. Um, but I hope this 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 universal rules uh, are something that you can take uh, take from here. And team o'clock also nicely integrates with Slack. So actually you can have this conversation on the Slack channel. You don't need to go to another tool and then go to another, maybe Jira or some ticket ticketing system. So you don't need to go all around. It's, it's nicely integrated. The, the next question is, um, how are you able to turn off work from Benjamin Thomas? I think this is a very important thing right now when we are spending whole days uh, in four walls within four walls and uh, people very frequently who have no experience with remote work will assume that people will be disconnected from work and may be lazy and maybe distract easily and do other things where in fact especially if they are alone they will overwork and there is a big danger that they will not be able to disconnect from the work mode to life or home mode. Um, so how do you do this? One of the things for me is uh, we discussed it a week, week ago to have this kind of uh, way to have the rhythm, uh, rhythm of, of uh, work. So we agree upon some kind of hours or meetings that will start and end the day. And today we talk about check-ins and check-out. Once you check out, you are not supposed to really do the work, um, but people do also things like changing the room. Like I have different room for work, different place for um, for leisure, or different type of equipment for work, different type of equipment for leisure. I've heard recently that uh, one of our developers is changing his shoes. So when he goes to work, he puts on a nice shoes, working shoes. And once he decides the day of work is over, he changes the shoes to comfortable, you know, uh, home slippers. And this way, this is mentally switching the, uh, the, the, the trigger in his brain. I'm not supposed to work anymore. This is my free time now. Yeah, exactly. Th these are the traps that you work uh, from with your sweatpants from couch and with your work computer and nothing changes basically when you're off because it's, it's the same setup. Um, okay. Uh, um, uh, Ibrahim asked, uh, how can we make weekly one-on-one -on -one meetings with large teams? Uh, this is actually uh, tricky because it takes a lot of your time, but it, it's actually worth it. So if you have weekly meetings, uh, then uh, I, I would suggest uh, seeing how much time you actually need to, to go over all the matters. Because setting one hour meeting uh, with every team member you have uh, every week will be so time consuming, this will be basically your only responsibility. So if you have clear agendas before the, the call, for example, you, uh, you let the other person know what you want to uh, talk about and it works both sides. So, so for example, you as a manager with your team member, you would like to let them know what, what would be the main topic of the conversation and, and uh, also from the ground. So, so uh, an employee can let you know what, what they want to discuss, uh, what, what cases they want to talk about. Uh, so so uh, this would be uh, uh, one, so uh, setting the reasonable time slot for that. Uh, so, so this won't take a lot of your, so it won't take the majority of your time. And of course, setting, setting uh, the agendas. Uh, and uh, actually, uh, this, th these are the, the things that I would recommend. 
And I think once again, we will talk uh, more deeply about it during the uh, remote leader, remote manager webinar. But I think this is our main responsibility as a manager to have this connection with people, to understand what they struggle with, to understand how can we help them grow within the organization, to use their potential. And it's very hard to do that if you don't have this dedicated time to a specific person. So the first question I would ask is, why there is no room in your calendar for those meetings. Even if you have a large team, maybe having short meetings and starting small, especially if you have never done this before and it feels awkward and it feels somehow forced, start from 10, 15 minutes. And if you were your team is, I don't know, 20, 30 people, okay, maybe not a weekly, but bi-weekly, but start with whatever you are able to do and then iterate and see. Maybe some of the meetings you have in your calendar will be not needed if people have this dedicated one-on-one -on -one time and maybe they will free some more time so you can spend more time with your people. Um, but start small with whatever you can and then iterate and see. I, I think this is a main responsibility of a manager and especially right now when we are all remote this is very important to keep this connection and to have this personal uh, kind of intimate discussion with every team member because they won't be able or willing to share with everything with the whole team or write everything in some tools uh, because something or some things might be misinterpreted or might be used against them or are very sensitive and it's a more um, fit to a discussion and, and talking more than writing and having a conversation with the team. One more question from Fabian. Uh, how can hybrid team empower their communication? That would, that would, uh, this question is tricky because it de depends on the, of the definition of, of hybrid team. I, I assume that this is uh, touching a, a situation when part of the team is collocated and part of the team is working remotely. So how do, how do you make them not feel disconnected from the rest or feel included in the team? And we assume always that remote is for everyone. Even if you are collocated, you still are, still are turning on your cameras. Even if you go to one room, everybody has a computer and camera so that every person who is joining up us from different place have the same view and the same channels, the same capabilities as everyone else. Even if they are collocated, they will write jokes on the channel rather than say to each other to just include everyone who might be interested in uh, this discussion or uh, might have problems with hearing them. So we try to have default to remote. Even if we are collocated, we have default to remote so that we don't forget that people have different conditions and they work in a different way than we used to do. But I think nowadays it's simpler because we are all forced or mo majority of us is uh, forced to work from home. Exactly. Uh, Sebastian Buczynski asked how to not make weekly one-on-one -on -one awkward and as natural as possible. That's, that's a great question. And uh, I think uh, this same thing goes for, for actually in-person communication. Sometimes we are afraid to come off as, as awkward. We don't know how to start a conversation. Uh, but uh, I, think, uh, I, I think that uh, asking uh, maybe not personal questions, but questions that are not related to work and sharing something that is, that is trivial. For example, a movie recommendation. So something that I've already shared with you before. And it, earlier in this presentation is a great uh, way to break the ice. Uh, it's actually finding uh, a common, common ground. And uh, I think next week we will talk more about team building uh, and tips from, from the next week's webinar will, be, uh, will come handy in these situations, how to make these this conversations less awkward. Uh, when I started working uh, at NetGuru, I was a bit of an, I was m more of an introvert and I didn't like to interact with people that much. Uh, but I like, I, I tried to, uh, to challenge myself uh, and, uh, for example, talk with people that are standing in the same queue uh, at the shop with me just to uh, find this, this common thing that you have. <laughs> so standing in the same line. Uh, asking about uh, about something that you can see, for example, uh, or asking for 
for a comment. And that was something that, that actually uh, made me accustomed to interactions with strangers. Uh, because let's face it, no, you won't have a relationship with every team member, but there are some, some, some ways to, uh, to try to do that. And that's uh, referring to something that you might uh, be interested in outside of work. Yeah, and, and we will talk uh, much more on uh, about one-on-ones on one of the upcoming uh, webinar about leaders and in the remote setup. But as a one quick tip, uh, or one comment and one tip. <laughs> comment is if it doesn't feel awkward, it means that you are probably doing something wrong, especially at the beginning. It should feel awkward. It means that you are touching on some subjects and touching some kind of areas that are important and speaking about them might be might feel awkward so if you if you doing that that's good you are on the right track maybe in time it will feel less awkward and the other thing like for a start if you have never done this before this way i recommend to do some kind of personality check within the team use mbti strength finder from gallup or whatever some tests you can find online for free and not because they will describe you the person their personality of character very in the day uh, manner it doesn't really matter how they describe but this is a great conversation starter like what do you agree with in this description what you are not seeing in me from my description this can fuel few first one-on-ones to get just get to know better with your team members and once those eyes are broken it will be easier to get up to speed and change the subjects to different things work related or life related but those kind of things i think are good to have this uh, first one or two meetings and have a reason or topic for the for a discussion Okay, and we have, I think, one last question from uh, Boisje. Uh, did you ever try uh, Sokoko? Uh, and if yes, what's your opinion about this tool for distributed teams? We haven't. We don't use this, this tool as a company. Uh, for distributed teams, we use mainly, mainly uh, either Google Meet or Zoom uh, for calls. Uh, we use all the uh, advantages of G Suite uh, for, for example, uh, collaborations on documents uh, and for, for instant communication, we use Slack. But again, it doesn't matter what tools you are using, it's more about how you use them. If you have good practices, good culture, and that the tools are fitting your work processes uh, as they are right now, uh, or as they would, you would like to change them in the remote setting. So the, the choice of the tool is rather a secondary thing. Thinking about how to use it, how to combine it with different tools you are using, with work processes that you have, is more important question at the very beginning. Exactly. We have some 10 more minutes. So if there are any other questions or thoughts, we have a time to answer one or two more. And if not, then I think we can move on to wrap up. Sure. So, uh, we will have more of those. We are publishing all of those webinars on our YouTube channel. There is a NetGuru YouTube channel, remote work playlist, and we will add all of the webinars that we have uh, in this place. And this one will be also added today, later on. And we have planned for additional webinars. We have ideas about different things that we can share with people. Uh, the next week one will be an enga about engagement and keeping the morale high, building the community in a team that is working remotely. And there will be a guest from our HR team showing also a role of HR in this whole uh, situation. And then the remote manager leader, so we touched some things uh, during this webinar and we'll expand on them later on how to approach uh, team management and how to be a leader that will uh, effectively engage people and motivate them to work and make them feel needed and appreciated. 
Uh, and then the next subject is sales and customer re relationship. We'll also touch on operations later on, um, about marketing. Um, so we have some different ideas. We'll try to show you how different teams within NetGuru um, work remotely. And we um, really recommend to go to our webpage about uh, remote work and read our blog. There are multiple art articles about how we communicate and how do we use our tools. So there is a, a really a, a lot of good content there. Um, so check it out. And for today, this is all. If you have any other questions and you want to have some answers that you were not willing to share publicly, you can write us, uh, you can see our emails and we'll answer them. We are here to help you and we really use it as a platform to help other people to get connected and share the best practices. And we cannot guarantee that what works for NetGuru will work for you, but we can guarantee we'll try to inspire you with some ideas and then you can work it out how, it, uh, how, how, it make, how to make work within your context of your organization. So thank you very much for today. It was great having you here. We, um, want to invite you for the next week webinar so they will be keep on coming and see you next time thank, thank you, you for joining